cryptocurrency enthusiasts have shown up in droves. Over 8,500 people at this year's consensus conference compared to 650 that attended back in 2015. And it's been a wild event. Marketers seized on the event showcasing Lamborghinis, a favorite symbol of crypto wealth. even a parody protest organized by Bankers Against Bitcoin, a tongue-in-cheek way of reminding people of the disruptive, disruptive force blockchain could be for Wall Street. All right, let's bring in Arthur Hayes, the co-founder and CEO of BitMEX, the Bitcoin Mercantile Exchange, which is the largest crypto trading exchange by volume. In a former life, by the way, he was a top trader for Citigroup. So, uh, Arthur, it's great to get your analysis here Thanks on the subject. Me. Welcome to the show. Um, so, tell us a little bit about BitMEX. You deal primarily with institutional traders, correct? No, we deal primarily trades? with retail traders retail. in okay. North Asia. So uh, our premise is that we want to give access to financial products to retail investors around the world using crypto. And right now that's Bitcoin. And so we offer highly leveraged derivatives, um, 100 times leverage. We offer on the Bitcoin. 100 times leverage. Correct. And our uh, perpetual swap product is the most liquid trading product around the world. It does about three and a half yards a day of flow. Okay. So, so when we say it's by volume, it's because you're dealing with the retail trader correct and so they're presumably not trading the volume the the dollar amounts that institutions are well there's really not that much institutional presence right yeah. now in uh, crypto it is a retail phenomenon are you equipped to handle institutional trades once that floodgate starts coming in as, as so many people are predicting absolutely you know we have an API people can code against it and you have a lot of prop shops and algo guys who've joined in because it's volatile, uh, there's negative correlation to a lot of other asset classes, and they actually trade against real humans instead of robots all day. The New York Stock Exchange just announced recently that it was going into also uh, cryptocurrency trading, settling trades, and one of the biggest pieces was the custodial aspect. You have that figured out though, correct? You have well, we, we hold Bitcoin, we hold right. you know, a large amount of Bitcoin. Uh, we have certain processes that we believe have made us safer than others in certain ways we do things. But at the end of the day, you still have to take that risk if you want to trade. Do you think um, that there's a risk, Arthur, to, you just said 100 times leverage, and it's yeah. retail. And that's something that we know has been a real problem, especially in risk asset booms, right? I mean, how do you arrive at 100 times and, and what's suitable? And, and is that something that is transferable to the United States? You said you're in Asia right now. Yeah, so really it's a headline number. Most traders do not use 100 times leverage. So last time I checked, it was around eight and a half times leverage. So a lot of people use that as a testing ground or almost like a free option, if you will. I think the price is going to go up in the next 10 minutes. Let me place a little trade. If I hit it, great. I made 100% ROE. If I don't, I just lose my initial margin. So it's, it's limited liability from the perspective of the trader. So unlike, you know, you go short XIV and you get carried out and you got to sell your house, uh, on BitMEX, you just lose what you put in. Arthur, kind of thematically, you talked about Asia, and clearly there's a ton of volume, and, and some are arguing that's two-thirds of the market. Why is that? And, and what do you see in terms of the U.S. retail presence in crypto in the near horizon? Well, I think Asia dominates crypto because they're very used to trading digital assets. So take South Korea, for example. They've been trading digital goods related to video games for almost two decades. So when you move to a purely money-based digital currency, they understand that culturally, and so they grapple, they you know, get on board um, quickly. Take that to the West, where you have a very established banking system, and things you know, work pretty well. Why do you need to go out and find a new way to trade or a new way to do things? You have a you know, broker that offers you options, futures, all sorts of different products. So you move that into the developing markets, where you don't have these type of products, and you see people who are a lot more interested in it. You've got a stunning Bitcoin forecast. Where do you see it going? 50,000 by the end of the year. By the end of the year? Correct. Now, in January, were you a little bit wobbly about that prediction? No. <laughs> no it's my job to make predictions. Whether or not they're right or wrong doesn't really matter to me. Oh, so you acknowledge them. Yeah. <laughs> you might be totally off base. Parker, welcome to the show. <laughs> yeah. You could be one of us, yeah. I guess. What, what, why is that? Well, I'm a, I'm a volatility trader at the end of the day. Uh, we make our money if it's volatile. If it goes up, if it goes down, if you have, you know, Bill Gates calling it a fraud or it's, we're harvesting babies, like, great. I mean, short it. I don't care. Or if you think it's going to be a million dollars in a few months, great. Buy it. Still don't care. We get matched trades. Arthur, hope you'll come back. Thank you. Fascinating to learn awesome. about your business. Arthur Hayes of BitMEX. Hey guys, so just a few notes on what was said by Arthur Hayes and uh, CNBC here in this uh, 
interview. Uh, first off, uh, why is the BitMEX position arguable? It's not actually trading, it's not actually number one in trading Bitcoin itself, the cryptocurrency itself. It's actually trading derivatives, which are essentially contracts that are based on an underlying equity, such as Bitcoin. Okay, second note, if uh, US consumers want to use uh, BitMEX, they'll have to use a proxy, and this is violating the website's uh, terms. But uh, I mean, if you guys want to take the risk, I mean, nothing adventure, nothing gained. Uh, as far as 100x trading goes, uh, limited liability trading uh, is, is what Arthur Hayes called it. And, uh, you know, I, I, I tend to agree. Uh, 100x trading is not something that people uh, are going to be doing very often. And when they do, it's just kind of like a one-off, like, ah, okay, whatever. You know, they're, nobody's betting the farm on this. Nobody's nobody's really concerned uh, with, with trading their entire portfolio on 100x trading. And it's, and it's more of just a catchphrase, basically saying, look, you can trade uh, as much as you want with as much margin as you want. We're not going to limit you. You're the only person limiting yourself. And I actually kind of like that. I think that's nice. And for his reasons on why Asia dominates crypto, you know, I'm going to have to agree with him here. Simply, Asia has been on digital currency trading, or I should say digital asset trading for a number of years. He mentioned it was about two decades that they've been trading um, essentially video game assets online. So, um, you know, I, I remember doing this myself, trading video game assets a long time ago. I was trading RS Gold, you know, and that was here in the United States, but they were doing it even more so in Asia. And they've always been even more so into gaming than we have in the U.S. So not really surprising seeing that uh, they jumped on this cryptocurrency train far, far sooner than the majority of the US, United States residents have. Uh, at this point, they're mostly just hearing about it for my final talking point, are we going to get 50k Bitcoin by the end of the year? Uh, I'm going to have to agree with that. If you guys have watched any of my other uh, cryptocurrency episodes, podcasts, whatever, uh, pretty much 50k Bitcoin end of year, in my opinion, is the conservative estimate. I think we're going to be closer to 100k Bitcoin by the end of this year, or if not, uh, anywhere from 80k. 100k Bitcoin. Uh, 50, 60k Bitcoin, in my opinion, is conservative for end of year 2018. So obviously going to be real exciting to see if that uh, is the case, if that takes place in the next seven months, considering as we're currently at about $9,000. Uh, anyway, so folks, talk to you later. This has been your host, Trillionaire. Tune in tomorrow for another episode. Peace. Yes. Solo voy con mi pena, sola va mi condena. Correré mi destino para burlar la ley. Perdido en el corazón de la grande Babilón. Me dicen el clandestino por no llevar papel.